How are we doing, folks? Your host, Moose, here on the Pit Panthers Football Network as we welcome you back to the first episode of our coverage of the Season 7 offseason for our Pitt Panthers dynasty. This will be our sixth offseason that we've gone through, and we are expecting to lose a number of seniors as well as the guy you can see, all the receiving records that he set on the screen, Jay Keyes, an absolute legend for the team. More than likely, he's not going to declare just because he doesn't have the rating to do so, but with the stats he's put up as a junior, we're going to end up just you know treating him as if he's a draft pick and let him move on to the next phase of his career uh, and, and have to find a replacement for him on the roster. But with that said, we take a look at how we fared over the six seasons on this dynasty over the course of NCAA 14 here uh, before we move to college football revamped version of NCAA 14 to continue the dynasty. Of course, with all the same rosters and everything else, but just uh, you know some updated interfaces and things of that nature. But you can see... Peach Bowl champions, our first season lost in the ACC championship, a down year in 2014, three straight ACC titles and college football playoff appearances. We won the Rose Bowl college football playoff semifinal last or two seasons ago before losing in the national championship game to Alabama, and then a bit of a down season this year and a bowl loss as we go 9-4, and four. but uh, it is what it is. We'll hope to rebound moving forward into next year and I the coaching changes aren't particularly important here because again we're moving over to college football revamp so we'll see a little bit of a shake up there but I just thought it was funny Auburn hired Oklahoma offensive coordinator Brian Harson just helped lead Oklahoma to a national championship in the dynasty and of course he goes to Auburn which is where he is currently now signed in real life so interesting to see that he ended up with the Tigers who struggled to a tough three and three and nine record last season Kansas State Bill Snyder finally retired somehow he hung on for six seasons in this dynasty they end up hiring Gary Patterson again uh, you know, we shake that out as it is. Minnesota ends up firing their head coach, which sets them up perfectly to try and bring in somebody the likes of a P.J. Fleck, who just led Cincinnati to an undefeated season, uh, regular season at least, before their close bowl loss. Maybe P.J. Fleck will go up there to resurrect a Power 5 program in Minnesota. Also, Michigan State, this was a big, big chance for Pat Narduzzi, of course, defensive coordinator for nine years for the Spartans before coming to Pitt. Mark D'Antonio finally retires, but Pat Narduzzi says, you know what, we're building something here at Pitt. I want to be at Pitt. I want to stay at Pitt. I'm a Pitt man through and through, and I'm going to be this football team's head coach. He turns down uh, Michigan State and stays with the Panthers, of course. So good to see there. Uh, love the moves in that regard, and excited to see what we can do moving forward into next season. You can see a little bit of the coaching uh, carousel there and how things moved around. Again, it's not going to pay, you know, the moves from this year not going to pay too much mind going into next season in our dynasty. Uh, but, you know, still part of the offseason here, how it would have shaken out uh, if we were able to, to continue this file. Again, we can't because if it's a team builder. But the big, big news from the offseason is the gigantic potential losses at the safety position none bigger than arguably tc colvin uh avery heller decides he's going to declare for the draft junior 90 overall this was one of those ones that i saw as a possibility he's high rated he's a junior he's been very very good he's already won national awards and he's just basically said i've accomplished everything i need to accomplish at the college level i don't need to put one more year of tape out i'm ready to go to the nfl right now heller won the 2017 ben Narek, the thorpe 219 career tackles, 29 for loss, four sacks, two INTs, four pass breakups, forced to fumble and recover to fumble. That 2017 season he had was absolutely ridiculous. No INTs, no forced fumbles this season, uh, less tackles, uh, same number of sacks, but 2017 was unbelievable. Fantastic player. This year, a little bit of a down year, I thought, but he decides to test the waters. Uh, we could have persuaded him. It looks like it would have been pretty easy, but I've decided basically anyone that decides to go to the NFL draft, that's their decision. I'm going to respect their decision and allow them to take that chance on themselves. Heller, I think he's ready for the show and he's going to get that opportunity. But the bigger loss is T.C. Colvin, true freshman, or he would have been a, he's a, would have been a redshirt freshman. He redshirted this past season from Washington, D.C. He was a guy that signed for us last season on National Signing Day, almost a surprise signing. We weren't even expecting it. 76 overall. This guy's a beast, 
absolute tank, he would have been more than likely our starting free safety next year with Jacob Lachlan graduating. It would have been Colvin and Heller as our starting safety duo. They've both decided to leave. Heller, of course, going to the NFL, much more reasonable decision. But Colvin transfers because he thinks he's going to get more playing time. He's going to go to Temple uh, on the eastern side of the state. I couldn't believe this one. I was absolutely flabbergasted, stunned. T.C. Colvin was a guy that I was excited to build my defense around. I thought he was going to come in and just be a fantastic player. I thought he was going to be a ball hawk. I thought he was going to be all around the football, a fumble guy, you know, knocking the ball loose all over the place. And instead... He decides he's going to transfer. Now, we do have, of course, a number of seniors leaving. We already knew we had 19 seniors set to graduate, and a number of them are ready for potential opportunity at the pro ranks. Ronnie Baker is projected as a very high pick. Michael Collins is a high pick. John Cooper, our center. CJ London projected to have an opportunity at the NFL level. Benjamin Ogden as well. And Paul Lee. So all those receivers we talked about. Jay Keys would have been in the mix as well. But, I, you know, again, he's junior, not with the highest rating. So... He wouldn't declare himself, but we're going to treat him as if he declared and is a first-round pick. Um, so three receivers, which is great to see. London, I knew, had the talent. He didn't show it this season, but he was definitely a talented player, so I trusted him uh, to be able to go on to the next level. Ryan Henry, I think, deserves a chance uh, at the NFL level. He was probably our most improved offensive lineman this season. Lachlan's always been solid and good for us. I think he definitely has a chance, maybe undrafted free agent, late-round draft pick to make an NFL roster. So there's a lot of guys that we could see playing at the next level uh, from this Pitt Panthers team. But what that means is there are so many Pitt Panthers that we're going to have to replace this season. We've already got a decent-sized recruiting class. I think, you know, 16, 17 recruits in the bag already. And we still need a couple of more. And actually, I think we have 19 recruits in the bag right now. Uh, and we still have room for a couple more with these departures that we're seeing from a couple of underclass, which is absolutely devastating. Not to mention the possible transfer implications of A.C. Reese, our backup quarterback, who more than likely will try and grad transfer elsewhere to get an opportunity to play his final year of college football. Uh, Jay Key's leaving. So that's four underclassmen leaving in addition to our 19 seniors. We're going to have a gigantic recruiting class this season. There's no doubt about that. And a number of players that we just want to recognize. Calvin Carl. Carlson. I think he's a guy that I'm surprised he doesn't have an opportunity to get drafted. Quell Hampshire is a guy that I definitely think has the speed and ability to play either safety or coverage linebacker on an NFL team. So many talented players that have been such a storyline for us. This was basically anybody that's a redshirt senior here in this group was in our first recruiting class from the dynasty. So a bittersweet moment seeing those guys move on from the Pitt program. But even more bittersweet with the loss of some guys that were going to be a real piece of our future moving forward. Uh, Heller, I respect this decision. Colvin just shocked me. I had no idea what was going to happen here. And, of course, you can see Persuasion Chance very low. He was basically saying, I'm gone. Uh, I, I promised him basically a bajillion things. Nine games. I figured if he started, he could definitely get 80 tackles. And I promised him two interceptions as well. And he said, I need an opportunity to showcase what I can do. He didn't have faith in himself. I guess, to win the starting job here at Pitt next season. And so he decided, you know what, I'm going to go somewhere where I know I can slot right into the lineup from day one. He's going to try and get a transfer waiver to become eligible straight away and go to Temple and get an opportunity to play there. So T.C. Colvin leaving the program. A bit devastating to see that. Um, but, you know, we're going to shake it out as best we can. Some really, really good players you see it's sorted by overall. That is a ton of of talent that we're losing this year. I mean, what's that? 12 players, 88 rated or better. Our punter, uh, a number of starters. Of course, we know we're losing eight starters on the offensive side of the football. And now with the departure of Heller, I think that brings it up to maybe five defensive starters as well. We're losing two starting linebackers, uh, one starting defensive lineman, and now two starters in the secondary. So you have five starters there, uh, eight starters. We're losing 13 starters plus our starting punter. Uh, as well as some guys that were definitely good depth players um, with two tight ends leaving, with uh, our backup running back leaving, who was a very talented player. It's tough. You look at Colvin, though. This guy's a beast. He's fast from the safety position, great acceleration. His hit power is unbelievable. His tackling is so good. He could have even, if he bulked up, moved to linebacker, to be perfectly honest, been like a Quell Hampshire type player. Uh, coverage skills are decent. I can't even describe how shocked I was when he decided to leave. 
Um, but we'll just have to work around it. We've definitely got some players that we have on the recruiting board going into signing day that we'd like to bring in as well as some guys already committed that could potentially provide the replacement for the position that he was planning to fill. And you can see Heller ends up going in the sixth round, so good for him going to the NFL draft. Hopefully he can make a roster out of training camp uh, and get his NFL career off to a very good start. A couple of receivers drafted, Cooper, London, Ronnie Baker, Collins. Love to see all of the Panthers in the pros. Uh, which is good to see. Now, as far as recruiting grows, we head into recruiting day. 19 scholarships already handed out. We should have about four available uh, with Keys leaving, with Colvin leaving, with Heller leaving, and likely AC Reese leaving. So four available scholarships to give out. Right now, you can see we've signed the majority of our players on the defensive side of the ball. Only six players on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, three tackles, two tight ends, which one of them being our long snapper, and a halfback. No quarterbacks in this class right now. No receivers in this class right now. Uh, just owing to the fact that we had all of our halfbacks set to return. Uh, CJ Kirk is set to be our starter next year, so a lot of quarterbacks did not express interest in coming to the program with a uh, true freshman currently as our starter, going to be a sophomore next season. Uh, we do have Austin Penny uh, and Noah Brooks, so we're, we're probably set there at least for next year, but we'll definitely need to consider making some future moves. Now, defensively, we have brought in 13 players. Uh, three defensive ends, two defensive tackles, so five D linemen, five, uh, four linebackers, a corner, a free safety, a punter, you know, counts as defensive, I guess, uh, and then an athlete who could play on both sides of the football, either receiver or defensive back. So as it stands right now, we focus heavily on the defensive side of the ball. We know that's Narduzzi's specialty. He's done a great job there. And when we look at our recruiting board, you can see we have four available scholarships, so we are pumping our points into four players. We made an executive decision. Marcus Smith versus Darren Johnson was kind of the biggest decision. We decided, you know what, we're going to put the points into the local Murraysville area product, Darren Johnson, rather than the Arizona guy, Marcus Smith. We're putting the majority of our points into Matt Wright because we know we need, we need, we need a safety with all those losses that we've seen. So Matt Wright is our number one target. We're putting the majority of our points into him. We've been in the mix for him all season, uh, as has UCLA. Need him to come in. We're also interested in Jamal Brown. He'd be a great offensive line addition, especially we're losing four starting linemen this year. We need to recoup the depth at those positions. So if we can sign him, he's one of the best guard prospects in the NCAA recruiting class this year. And, of course, Johnson, uh, the defensive tackle from Murray's, will be a great signing. He's got interest from LSU and Florida as well. And then, finally, going after uh, receiver Justin Wilson, who looks very, very underrated from Florida. I really think we have a great chance to sign him. We're heavy favorites for his signature. And we haven't signed any receivers at this point yet. We're losing three of them. Uh, in Jay Keys, Benjamin Ogden, Paul Lease. We still have some receivers on the recruiting board, uh, but I think it'll be a smart signing to go ahead and get Wilson in just to add a bit more depth to that position. So as always, guys, let me know which of those signings you think we're going to get in. Let me know what you think of the departures that we just saw uh, in this offseason. And as always, guys, take care. We'll see you very soon. Hail to Pitt. Bye-bye.